Hi guys, Al, Spiritual Atheist, back again. Had my uh, final infusion this morning, I hope is the final one. Now I uh, wait six weeks and they, in six weeks they will go in and take a look, which is a very unpleasant experience. Uh, and hopefully nothing new is growing and so let's assume that it's not and then they do this again uh, every uh, three months for the next two years that I will be going in for this uh, procedure after that uh, every six months for three more years total five I'll be 77 by the time they're done uh, or we'll start over again or whatever you know maybe after five years it goes down to one year I don't know but uh, I'll be you know 77 ain't bad that have, that's that's what I'm uh, shooting for now I have uh, been thinking about the nature of uh, mind and God surprisingly that at one time the uh, God concept uh, I think had some use I, I, I really do that the truth is though that we have outgrown it and now it's uh, the concept uh, appears to be used uh, almost totally for exploitation as far as I can see in any case but Let's start with a, uh, an assumption that anything that is contained has to be by definition smaller than that which contains it. So the more intricate and mind-stretching concepts that we can try to imagine or visualize uh, the uh, actually the better it is for our for our minds and it that enlarges the uh, the mind so to speak it uh, enlarges its capacity by definition because if you can conceive of something that you weren't able to before uh, you're you know there has to be that type of uh, enlargement go on there's a wonderful uh, Buddhist Sutra uh, called the Vimal Kirti Sutra that is uh, in my mind incredibly funny but has also has uh, some very specific uh, visualization instructions the early Buddhists uh, understood that the mind had the ability to hallucinate uh, they were very familiar with that and what they uh, decided to do was to make use of that ability consciously this is the type of thing that I'm talking about so when you hear about uh, Tibetan visualization or something like this you know it's controlled hallucination and attempting to use that uh, well the Tibetans have actually turned it into an art form but we won't go that far but let me give you the example from this sutra this is that we have a meeting between uh, uh, two great bodhisattvas in a very small room Vimal Kirtri is, is sitting there uh, and he's a he's not well and so he's in his sick he's in a sick room in a very kind of small bare room because he knew that uh, the uh, other bodhisattva was coming to talk to him. The other bodhisattva's name was Menjushri. And so these two are sitting and it was decided in the Buddhist heavens that uh, a bunch of uh, well I don't wouldn't you call them spirits or whatever but you know you know like the angels you know the Buddhist version if you want 
uh, wanted to hear this conversation between these people. So they all came down, you know, so there's like 50,000 of them in this small room. And they're all, uh, only these were, you know, like supernatural creatures. So they were like 20, 30 feet high, and they're all sitting on these uh, 20 foot high uh, chairs. And yet the room was not crowded and it, nothing was cramped. Now, if you can imagine that, if you can visualize that, uh, you it's good, see? I mean, you get the idea, right? It, it's, it's sort of like, fall along. Can you, can you imagine, can you conceive of this? Can you actually see it? Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? The whole sutra is full of this. It's, it's, it just goes on and on and on. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, the same thing holds to the uh, def definitions of, uh, of of the deities, uh, especially the the Judo Christian God who starts off as sort of a tribal warlord of, of the Old Testament, and yet has this. Uh, all, you know, can you imagine the power of it or the burning, can you, can you imagine a burning bush, say, you know, the, 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 these things are being presented for you to, to kind of wrap your head around. And they are, uh, I, I don't agree with the, uh, with, with, you know, if you want to know something about the Old Testament, ask Jews, they'll tell you their stories. <laughs> uh, very few people, uh, take the its history though there are out there and that's sad because the uh, minds of such uh, dogmatic folks are what we would say closed they, they're not benefiting from uh, this thing that we're talking about <coughs> in the New Testament, we, they kept to the feudal concept of God because, it, you know, the Lord of Lord thing, because it was all they knew. Uh, so that, you know, that stayed, but they also introduced uh, in the uh, New Testament the concept of God the Father, uh, allowing for a, uh, a personal relationship between anyone and, and the deity. So it opened it up a bit, and it, and the idea now of the can you imagine this? Uh, can you conceive of of someone who loves someone so much? Uh, and it goes on and on, and it's uh, Hindus refer to this as bhakti yoga. It's a uh, a special kind of yoga for uh, the people who have a devotional personality type which incidentally has never been me. I, I don't fit, but I have a close friend who is a bhakti yoga and uh, <coughs> has described to me that he comes from a nice Jewish family and found himself in India sitting in front of a big statue of Hanuman the monkey god who is the uh, who, who is the, the deity of, of the bhakti yoga sex and you know like thinking and you know no images and here I am uh, Hanuman by the way the the monkey god uh, was said that he uh, uh, advanced so far that he actually could unify and become one with the deity but refused to do so because he wanted this to keep a, an element of separation so that the deity could know what it was to be loved so much you know, so it's it's one of these things you can you know it's it's all a play if you want it's all a a, a very subtle but yet fun if you to think of it game the other thing about mind uh, as we look at uh, its nature there's only one mind that we know of, right? And it is 
here we are perceiving the world and can we actually become conscious of our own consciousness? The answer is simply no. Uh, the eye cannot see itself without a mirror. Uh, conscious cannot be conscious of itself. It can see that consciousness reflected in the reality of the world but as far as a direct perception it doesn't work that way it just doesn't happen now the uh, the Buddha see reality as a series of mandalas uh, the first mandala is the uh, the world uh, external to the body, so to speak, the physical world that you you perceive it, you you perceive the camera, you perceive the screen, uh, you you perceive. Right. At the same time, there's another Mendel that's part of that, and that's the physical situation that you're in. Uh, I have, uh, I'm old, I have arthritis, my shoulder hurts, right? Uh, it's very much a part of what I'm perceiving right now, is that pain. Right? It's part of the world. It's, and, and the next thing after that is the emotional and the psychological situation. Uh, what am I feeling? What you know that that's all part of the perception of what goes in to make up this moment. And the Buddha say, and guess what? You're not any of it. That you are not what you perceive. You can't be what you perceive. And there's a uh, even a meditation. There's a meditation. Uh, it's a rather advanced one, but. I don't believe in advanced and beginners, so, you know, we'll just start. It's called Vipassana, and the and I'm not suggesting that anybody go out and start meditating. If you want to, fine, do it, but you don't need to meditate to do this. Vipassana, in its simplest form, is look at the space, notice the space, be aware of the space between you and what you perceive and this little cat right here is demanding some attentions from me yes he is what's up come on up Mwah. Mwah. meet Dexter who every once in a while decides that what I need is uh, some cat appreciation time <laughs> but he's He's a good guy. Uh, so, if you're not, if you're looking at the at, at the space, if you're noticing the space that things occupy, the space between you and it, uh, even your thoughts, even the pain in my arm, that there, it all has its own space. It all occupies its own space, and it's all part of what the mind is perceiving and therefore cannot be the mind. Hence the Buddhists take the non-physical aspect of mind. I think that's a pretty good place uh, to stop. I'm going to uh, finish off tonight with a, uh, another poem by my favorite poet, me, uh, that I wrote back in the 70s. but. It still holds and it fits tonight's talk. Inside of my mind is my mind, asleep in my arms, dreaming wonderful pictures without frames. Thanks for hanging out, guys. See you later.